David, welcome to the show. Long time, brother. Man, what's happening? What's happening, bro? Oh, man, not much. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm super happy to be here. Damn, so it's so good to talk to you and see you at the same time. Like, uh, so for those that don't know, we we just met up on uh, an app called Clubhouse, which is kind of the new social media app for for audio, I guess you could call it. And it's you can go in these rooms and chat with people, and there's just a lot of cool, interesting people on there, um, in all different backgrounds, business and fighting and everything else. And it's growing quite fast. And we we ended up meeting on there having a great conversation and i was like man we gotta do a podcast and uh so here we are man and like i'm excited dude so crazy yeah 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 crazy it's been uh it's been a while we've known each other man it's been it's been almost 20 years bro it's uh you know we're fighting we're fighting on the same circuit like we, we fought 16 years ago we, we fought 15 uh, 14 and a half technically september 23rd 2006 <laughs> So it was basically 14 and a half years, but pretty much 15 years. And that's, that's when we were actually in the octagon, you elbowing me in my face. Um, but we knew each other before that. Obviously, I was watching you fight for, for years. And, and obviously, you watched me in my first few UFC fights. And, and that was the yeah. first time we collided. That was the first time I made yeah. it to like the, 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 the final man before the, the, the title fight. So you were like the, the ultimate yeah, test. Man. The ultimate test for me. I'm, I finally got the, the big fight of my career. Great fight, man. Great fight. Competitive fight. It was, uh, it was, man. You, you seized the moment, man. You, 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 you did the right things. You, you applied. A, you had a you guys had a great game plan, and and I have tremendous respect for for you and your camp, your team. You know, you guys are AKA. You guys uh, are all studs, and um, yeah, man. It was a great experience, man. I'm I'm super grateful for for the journey, for the experience. You know, it's uh, it was fun. It was fun. Your hands, man. I I keep. I keep thinking. I keep thinking of the my my ego was saying, "Man, come on, man, I'm fast." They call Mike Swick. I'm a, a quick Swick. I'm like, I'm quick. I'm quick. And then I went in there. I'm like, "Oh snap, he's quick. He is quick." <laughs> I was freaking out, man. The flurry. I was like, "Oh snap, he is freaking quick." Dude, I was guy. throwing. I was throwing I, crazy <laughs> flurries. Like I, I didn't even know what I was gonna throw. It was like, like usually it was like punches, and it was like I throw like two or three punches, and I land a solid one, right? Because because at that time I was four zero in the UFC. I had two quick knockouts and two quick submissions. So uh, if I landed a flurry, it was usually I la I went through and I connected and I hurt the person, and then I just unleashed yeah. until they went down. With you, yeah, it's like I yeah. land. I, I threw those three three four punches, and even even if I landed, I didn't see you get hurt, and so then I'm like throwing like three or four punches, a knee, a kick, and like a back kick. It was the craziest combinations. Like I'd never done those combinations. I was just, I practiced them all separately, but I was trying to do them like individually and, and mad respect to you for in your, your camp and everything too. You know, like I knew you were a tough fighter and I studied you like I've to this day, like I've never studied an opponent because it was such an important fight. And, and I watched yeah. you beat Evan Tanner. I watched you go into the fight with, with, with Rich, Rich Franklin and Rich Franklin was a champion and you were the favorite, like you were actually the favorite going into that fight. Um, and so like, I knew you were very, very dangerous and, and I knew the things that you did to win fights and, and it was the elbows was the big for you. Uh, you obviously yeah. a hard hitter and then you gave your back but I was the most proud because you, you give your back and then people take your back and get excited. Then you, you reverse them and then you elbow them out until they, they almost die. And I was so proud of myself <laughs> that both times you gave me your back, dude. It was almost like I'd, I'd studied it so much. Both times you gave me your back yeah. and, you, and you grabbed my arm and you grabbed my arm so that you could pull me around. And I, and yeah, I got yeah. myself back up and I totally just gave up your back. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, at some point, I remember, you got up and you went like this, right? Yeah, because I, I wanted you to know I knew that what you were trying to do, but I will say I knew <laughs> I knew the most dangerous move you had was the elbows, and you landed unbelievable amounts of elbows. That's what that's what busted up my nose in the first round. I think I was bleeding pretty good after the first round, um, but your elbows were quick. So you can say my hands were quick, but I've never been hit with elbows that quick in my life like you, you they were coming from everywhere if for the clinch with you is like the most frustrating thing because you're trying to knee you're trying to control the clinch and just out muscle somebody but you're just taking these like it's like getting hit with baseball bats at all different places of your face and you don't really know where to go to block them so you, you were just a master at landing elbows man yeah uh thank thank you man yeah it, it was a timing thing you know like that micro second you know that that, that fraction of a second that there's a little bit of movement I, I used it to, to, to slide an elbow in, you know, like there's always, whenever you push or pull uh, or your knee, 
there's always that little split second that you could throw a little little elbow. It's, yeah. You gotta you gotta work it work a lot at it, and, and it's just a timing thing, you know. It's nothing. I don't think it was that much speed. It was very much the timing, but it was that that dynamic too. I was throwing hard. I was throwing with explosion, you know. And you were so tough, man. Like super tough. Like and you were super defensive and super tough. So like. The first couple rounds, you were passive. You were a little bit more passive than usual. We both were because it was like we we were, we knew how dangerous we were, and we knew that like we both yeah. could finish the fight with with you know a, a single strike, and we didn't want to yeah. lose. I mean that was a title contention fight, you know. So like it was we were the two best fighters in the, in the middleweight division at that time, and and so the more you were passive in those first couple rounds, the more aggressive I got because I was like, all right. He, he's afraid of my striking and, or he's respecting my striking. I'm going to unleash yeah. everything I can. So I could, I could unleash a few things and then you'd come back with a powerful combination, but you would, you would take it and, and whether I missed or, or you blocked it or you, or I actually yeah. landed like some of those kicks right to your midsection. Some of those punches I landed, you just took it and just come in like the Terminator. Right. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was such, it was such, and people don't realize some of the people were getting like hesitant or watching the fight because we were two of the best strikers and we weren't just slugging it out from the beginning like Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner because we would have died. We couldn't do that for three rounds. One of us would be knocked out in, in 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so for people sure. were getting like hesitant because we, were, we weren't like, we were, we we're very uh, meticulous with our striking, but people don't realize, and maybe you can vouch for this, the fight was very hard. It was very, very exhausting because like when we weren't, Jesus. when the mental stress of trying to land those strikes precisely and I was feigning and you were countering and you were, you were landing strikes and you were just unleashing flurries from out of nowhere when you were being very passive. So I, I couldn't like time you. And then the clinch work being like muscle versus muscle. And then the, I'm trying to land knees, you're landing elbows and that's stressing. It was an exhausting fight. Like we really gave everything we had in, in that fight. And then for sure, man. And then by the end of the second round, you know, I feel like I, I got those rounds and then I was like, all right, man, I just got to survive now. I'm going I'm to, I, I didn't want to cruise that last one. I never want to cruise, but I felt like, all right, I, the, the, I thought it was going to keep going the same way. And I was excited going to that third round. And then you opened up, man, and you, man, you kicked my ass in that third round. Like you, you, <laughs> you, were, you think I was so? like, I, holy I you shit. Got, you got the, the, you got the takedown in the third. <laughs> and I think that it, it messed me up, man. I, I think that's that's what got you the round because I yeah. I did open up in the third because I remember I remember um, my corner screaming at me between the second and the third like, "Yo, we didn't come here to lose, you yeah. know? Like, 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 let's go, let's fight, let's let's open up." And then I did, and I got taken down, you know. And, and then yeah. you 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 worked your magic, man. Like you you did some good stuff. And the thing is, like, you took me down. And you were known for the Swicket team. Yeah. You know? So I was like, there was a high risk. I was aware of all that stuff. We studied you, man. You're, you're a stud, man. So so we worked hard during camp. And um, I was like, man, okay, okay, don't get caught with that guillotine. So it's like, uh. so when I got taken down, I kind of froze. I was like, oh, snap. You know, I did, it, it, it's fun, man. Now when I look back, I'm like, I'm happy it's over. And it, it was fun, man. It was cool. But, man, you're very skilled and uh, very uh, – um, efficient you know you you're a very precise striker and that's why there was a lot of not dull moments but a lot of studying moments a lot of yeah. fainting and, and studying because i knew that you knew how to aim properly and, and and you had very good speed and power so i was careful and so were you because because you respected my power as well and and that is a man people have to understand it's a tough fight when i fake and you flinch and you fake and i flinch and then, then just a combination happens out of nowhere. Like, and, and, yeah, and you're having yeah. to defend like three punches and kicks and all, and all the shit at the same time. Both of us were doing that. And, and if yeah. you look at the fight, the, if, if you look at, if you analyze the fight, you can watch the fight. And, and as you watch the fight, the first couple rounds, you can see uh, like, okay, Mike's dominating and, and, and doing good and everything like that. If you analyze the fight start to finish, it literally came down to that second round takedown that I got. And I timed that takedown over your punch and got that takedown and inked out that, that second round because you clearly yeah. won the third and I, I won the first. And that second round was so close with us going back and yeah. forth. If it wasn't for me getting that takedown, I think that could have been a very big factor. And, and the reason I say even if, even if I was winning, even if I was winning the, the second but didn't get that takedown and still won the second but it was, it was closer – your domination mm -hmm. in the third round was so strong. And I think the third round is graded so much more because that's the end of the fight. The judges yeah, would have, yeah. I think, given you that second round. And, and so you would have won the fight. So it, it, it was a lot closer than what people would probably think no matter which way they saw it because it was, it was, it was my proudest fight, man, because like, 
it was it was my last fight when I was healthy for one before I got sick with my my stomach and my esophagus and and, it, and I studied you so hard and I did a lot of good things to get just through the fight and ink out the victory. Um, but I respected you so much and knew how good you were. And it was such a, a, a big challenge and such a fun moment to fight somebody so good. You know, like winning early and fast is fun and, and you know, or fighting a lesser opponent is fun because you have an easy night and you go home. But when you really get in there, if you're a real fighter at heart and you get in there with a real lion and, and then you, you realize, you taste the blood and like you realize that it's two lions fighting and then you got, you know, 20,000 people watching and it's, it's yeah. the adrenaline. Like it, it was fun, man. It was a fun fight. I like, I just enjoyed it. You know, it was, it was one of the best fights of my career for just, for just the, the alpha aggressive, uh, nature, yeah. <laughs> nature of it. You know, like I'm looking across and you got GSP in your corner and Dean Lister. And like a big part of my game plan was taking you down at certain times to win the round. Because if you busted me up with elbows and you landed those spinning kicks and, and I missed my combinations and couldn't knock you out, it could come down to takedown. So I was working a lot of takedowns and coming under your punches, which is how I got in. And then I saw nice, you walk out yeah. with Dean Lister and I was like, oh shit, I had no idea you were training with Dean Lister and, I, and, and, and you had GSP yeah. in your corner too. So I was like, fuck man, I, I hope I can get the takedown if I need it, you know, which I ended, <laughs> up did, I ended up needing it for sure. But it was crazy, man. Anyway, it was, it was so cool, man. It was so cool to have that experience and I'm glad that you feel the same way that, that we, we went out there and had a great fight, you know, and, and it was an exciting fight and, uh, and it was a good time in our careers. You know, I really believe like you, you, you stepped it up, man. Like, like during that fight, like you were better in our fight than all your previous fights For that sure. I've seen before. Like all your knockouts and stuff, there was this nice, it's cool. But man, I mean, sometimes I hit you certain ways and I'm like, yo, this guy never got hit like that before. And he's yeah. taking it like a champ, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like, cause I watched all your fights and you know, I just studied, studied and, 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 and man, man, it was, it was remarkable. I, I, I kudos to you man like you did you did amazing and and man you saying that that you know you, you, you um it was your last your last fight as you were healthy you said yeah like it's it's uh it's crazy how people don't know what people go through it's like people see the the five or 25 minutes out there of you fighting but but they see the end result they don't see the struggle the the grind the ups and downs the 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 the, the problems that people that, that we go through you know, and it's like I didn't know. Like you told me today, like 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 that you went through through stuff like that, and it's 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 crazy how how people will just judge you, and then ah, he's finished. He's this. He's that. Yeah, man. If you knew, if you knew what he goes through, you know, I, I, I like like I, I don't blame them because they don't know, right? They don't know. But it's 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 just it hit me when you told me about your situation. I'm like, man, I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, and it kind of it kind of sucks, man. But but uh. See, you're doing good now. You're doing good now. You're doing well, right? Yeah. And, and going back just really fast, like you said, when you hit me so hard, like like I I don't know if you remember the exact punch because you just said that, but it's it's still the hardest I've ever been hit. Like I'm, I've been knocked out, you know, obviously by Matt Brown, but I, I didn't feel the punch and and it was just on the jaw. It was one of those punches where you're going to get knocked out. You know what I mean? Like it, it didn't it wasn't because of his power. It was just because he landed perfectly on the jaw. But you hit me yeah. in the forehead, which is a hard place to knock someone out. So you can actually take yeah. a really hard shot. But I remember it was like one of the hardest I've, shots I've ever been hit. And and I don't know exactly what part of the fight it was, but I remember like like thinking like, oh, shit, man. Like if I get hit with another one of those, he's going to be not only winning the fight, but telling me what the hell happened. And I'm going to be wondering how I'm in the middle of an octagon. I, I, I think, <laughs> People I are standing third, around me. I think, was, I, I think it was in the third round. It may have been. So. Yeah, it was yeah. Fuck, so hard, man. And, and yeah, <laughs> and, and it's crazy. I'm thinking, I'm thinking one of the few guys that earned a title fight and then never got it because I, I, I earned it from that fight. And then, uh, and then I, 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 it was the first time the UFC was going to Texas, which is my hometown. And I wanted to fight on that card. And I was supposed to fight possibly Anderson Silva because he beat Franklin. And uh, so I had the title fight technically, you know, because I, beat, beat, I had won that fight. And, uh, but then the fight was going to Texas soon. And it was my hometown and it was this big stadium. And like I wanted to be in front of my hometown crowd and everything. And so I took that fight while I was waiting for the, the Franklin and, and Anderson fight and for them to figure out who's going to be the champion. And then I, I yeah. dropped the decision there. I, I got sick between between your fight and that fight was when I started having the issues and not being able to eat. I came okay. in. I think I fought Okami at like 190 pounds. I didn't I didn't even cut weight for that fight. You didn't cut? No, not at all. And then uh, – but it wasn't – I'm not – it's not an excuse for the fight. The fight was – if you watch the fight, it was really close and it was a good fight and I'm still proud of that yeah. fight. It came down to just uh, getting taken down and uh, he, he outrode me for one of the rounds. But – 
it, that was the difference. And then I lost that fight and that took away my title fight. And then I ultimately had to drop after that fight to welterweight because I couldn't even weigh 185 pounds. I was walking after that fight. I started walking at around like 172, 173. And I was like, Whoa. fuck. So I called Dana. I'm like, Dana, I want to drop to welterweight and, and fight welterweight. I didn't want to tell anybody I was sick. And I didn't want to go to the hospital because like, I thought I had like, sk- like cancer. Like it was like, it was so bad. I was scared. Mm. And I'm like, I'd rather just fight until like that day comes than to be told like, oh, you got s- stomach cancer and you're going to die in like three months or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, so I was too scared to go find out. And so I just, I kept the diet that I could. And, and then I told Dana I wanted to drop to 170 and Dana was like, there's no way, there's no way you can make 170. I'm like, Dana, I'm walking at 173. I'm pretty sure I can make 170. And he was just like, what the hell's wrong? I'm like, nothing, nothing. I'm good. I'm good. And, uh, and then I started my welterweight career and that's how, that, that's how I dropped. And people of course took the criticism. Like you said, like people were like, oh, you're starving yourself. Now you lost uh, the fight at middleweight. So you're trying to fight welterweights now and you want to be big. So you're starving yourself to, to make weight. But I just, yeah. I couldn't eat, man. I couldn't eat food. I couldn't, they would suck so oh. bad, man. It was so, it was such a, such a shitty experience. But, but anyway, the story, the, the point is, is you, you got my last healthy fight and it was a great, it was a great fight and a great match. And like you said, I was definitely elevated and fought my greatest fight and still barely, barely inked out that fight. You know, like so it was, it was a, it was a good fight, man. So much respect to you and your team and your training. And, uh, it was good memories, man. It's always, always will be one of my, my favorite fights of my, of my career. Man, it was dope. It was dope, man. I'm, I'm uh, super grateful for, for, for the journey, the experience. And uh, yeah, man. So so I, I, I didn't know that was the reason you dropped to 170, man. Because yeah. I thought I thought because a lot of guys, a lot of guys, people from my camp were telling me, Dave, you should drop to 170. I'm like, man, man, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to make 85, man. Yeah. Like, it's tough <laughs> to make big. 85, you know. It's, 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 it's uh it's crazy, man. It's just that weight cutting thing. That, what do you think of all this weight cutting? You think it's a, it's it's, it's a good thing because some some guys cut like 20, 30 pounds, man. You know, I wasn't a big middleweight. That? I was never a big middleweight. So like, I fought two hundred five on the TV show, and then that's way I, I weighed in at one ninety three when I fought Stefan. So I was like way way light for. Uh, for, for for light heavyweight, and then I was about the same for middleweight. About I walked at okay. like one ninety three by by fight time like you know outside of fight like maybe the beginning of the camp i may maybe close to 200 but like by fight time i was always like 192 193 so it was always a pretty easy cut it was it was more about just not eating a lot before before the weigh-ins and then just maybe sitting in the sauna for for an hour or something like that um and i liked it i, I enjoyed not cutting a lot of weight for me it's like a, it was never a strength issue yeah. okami you and okami both were, were two of the strongest guys i fought um but i never felt like the strength issue was worth uh depleting myself so much f- for a lot of weight like i could have made welterweight in my first ufc fight you know what i mean i could have always stayed at welterweight if i wanted to take the cuts like some of the guys um especially yeah. some of these guys making bigger cuts than that but i just for me i just felt like i didn't want to deplete myself too much i wanted the speed i wanted to be you know there's a lot of other issues pressure and adrenaline and nerves and and, yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah. anxiety i don't want to add to that with like uh you know being depleted and dehydrated and, and stuff like that so yeah, I don't know. I think I think a lot of people, some people are cutting too much weight. I think. Yeah, it could be like in the long run. I don't think it's a good thing, man. Like definitely like not. If you fight, if you fight a few times a year and you cut like thirty pounds in in, in forty eight hours, I mean, there's a lot of wizards out there that help guys cut that much weight. It's good, but man, is it good in the long run? Are you you want to have a long life after fighting? You know, fighting is is fighting is so short. You know, the fighting career is so short. I competed professionally for 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 14 15 years that's a long career but the uh, you know what i'm saying but but in in the lifespan it's not it's tiny, it's tiny it's a bit, yeah. you know so it's important it's important to to think longevity but i totally get it when you're in that circuit when you're in that world nothing else matters but the next fight yeah. you know nothing else matters but becoming the ufc world champion yeah. like nothing well that's how it was to me yeah. to me it was an obsession yeah. it was it was it, one of the hardest things for me was to, to, to deal with getting cut or losing, uh, get, getting cut from the UFC or losing a UFC fight. To me, it was it was it, it was terrifying. It was it was it was terrible. You know, it, yeah. I lived for that. This is the only thing I woke up. And this is all I thought about. You know, and and uh, I trained for that only. You know, uh, it was the same for you. It was the same for 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 a lot of guys because to get to that level, to compete at that level. You need to be obsessed. You cannot. You cannot be like, yeah, you know, I'll, 
all five and no, you need to be obsessed and then just do that stuff day in and day out and 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 you have to pay the price and that's why when you when you don't reach that goal sometimes it's tough hard uh pill to swallow like they say you know yeah Stop. And I know a lot of guys, you know, I think we're, we're definitely, we've proven ourselves. We're two of the toughest guys out there in our time, you know, definitely 100%. Yeah. But, you know, everybody has anxiety and everybody has fear before a fight. You have fear anytime you have a, a, a chance of losing something that you want. If there's a risk yeah. of losing something you want, you're going to fear losing it or, or whatever. It's not pain. It's not, uh, you know, hurting or anything like that. It's, 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 it's the, 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 the fear of losing it, the fear of letting people down, the fear of whatever. And I know you mentioned sometime you had a, a way to overcome anxiety or, or to treat the anxiety that you felt when you fought. What, what did you do to kind of, uh, battle that, that anxiety and the fear? And you know, Mike Tyson's talked about how he was scared before a lot of his fights as well and had anxiety. Yeah. What did you do? Cause I know there's something that was, was said at some point about you dealing with anxiety and, and, and overcoming it and stuff. What, what was it that you did to overcome that anxiety and get out there and, and perform like you did? Well, you know, I, I did consult a lot of uh, sports psychologists, you know, uh, s- s- mental coaches, gurus. I, s- I spent a lot of money on that stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I, I invested on, on uh, books. I read a lot of books. And at the end of the day, to be honest, man, it was just accepting anxiety, accepting the fact that you've, you're scared and you have fear. You know, like, like to, th- that's what worked for me. For me, it was just deep breathing and just accepting what's in front of you, wh- that you're, that there's a danger that you're going to get hurt. There's a danger that you might lose. There's, there's a, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Accepting what is, you know, staying in the present moment and just moving forward and just going, going for whatever's in front of you. Go, walk forward and con- conquer, you know, just, just acknowledge it. And because for me, for the longest time, it was just like, oh, no, I'm not scared. Oh, my God, I can't believe. Oh, why am I anxious? Why? 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 When it came to when it came, when I started being being very friendly with with fear and anxiety, like yeah, okay, I'm anxious. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm shitting in my pants right now. I'm I don't, I'm not I'm not comfortable in this situation. It's okay though. It's okay. And then just these words. It's it's okay. It's okay. It's gonna be fine. It's okay. And then it just helped me so much. Just talking to myself, self talk, positive self talk. You know, just just it's okay. It's okay. Admitting that you're scared, accepting that you're scared, accepting that you're anxious, and just going with it. You know what I'm saying? Because, because, and, and also, I would say to myself, yeah, yeah, I feel terrible right now, but I'm still gonna kick his ass. Yeah. You know, I feel terrible right now, man. I'm, sh- I'm, I'm shaking. I, I feel weak. I don't feel strong, and I'm still gonna whoop his ass. Yeah. You know, I would, I would, yeah. I would tell myself little things like that. It's the mind is complex, man. You, you have to play some tricks. You gotta play some tricks with your mind sometimes, you know. You gotta, you gotta know how to, how to play these games, you know. Because when the mind plays tricks on you, play tricks on your mind. And and that's let, how I see it. And let me ask you, like, just because this, this happens to me, since fighting, like, people can never know know what it's like to go out there and walk out to the octagon and fight unless you do it. Like, that sense of fear and that sense of what's on the line and the pressure, whatever the case may be, especially you walking out for a title fight, stuff like that. Those yeah. nerves, that anxiety, you can't ever understand it until you do it. Like you can watch it and think you know, but you can't really know. Have yeah. you found after your career, when, when, when you stop walking out to the octagon and stop fighting and stop feeling that intense amount of pressure, you know, there's highs that people chase that are intense amount of highs, but then there's also intense amount of pressures that we had to deal with. Do, do you find yourself chasing any fear after your career? Like for me, like I'll chase fear sometimes. Like I'll I'll try to feel alive again and put myself in situations that are dangerous or crazy or or to try to. It's almost like I'm trying to get back that feeling again, even though it was such a painful feeling and, and a crazy feeling and anxiety feeling. But a part of me kind of wants that sometimes, and I seem to to do things, and people are like, "What the hell are you doing? That's crazy." But I feel like my body's just naturally chasing that same kind of fear I used to have. And, and it feels like to feel alive maybe or something. I don't know. My friend, we are adrenaline junkies. Yeah, That's I think what we, we have are, to bro. be. It's, it's, it, w- once you taste that, that, that y- y- you know, that feeling of, of knocking someone out, you raise your hand and there's 20 people going nuts, 20,000 people going nuts. That rush or that walk to the octagon and everybody's like, yeah, let's go, Mike. Let's go, David. Uh, that rush, you'll never get it ever again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so 
subconsciously, like consciously, you know that you won't, but subconsciously, you're still looking for that rush. You're like, yo, yeah. I haven't felt that that that, that rush in in a few years now. Well, how am I gonna, you know, what I'm saying so. So that's why a lot of fighters, when they retire, they go, they do wrong things. They they, they escape to the drugs. They escape to different things. That's why I'm so grateful. Thank God I found teaching. You know, I start I started teaching. Uh, I opened a school, started teaching martial arts, and and and, and it's such a blessing. You know, I I, I got into acting. I, I love doing that stuff. You know, like I, I found little things that helped me. You know, um, stay stay busy, keep my mind busy. Keep, you, you you have to stay busy because after fighting, after a fighting career, like a real fighting career, not not a few fights you know i'm talking about a real career like we had it's not easy to just to just stay um um stay focused and do the right thing and not go and do stupid things you know right. it's, it's, it's not it's not easy if you don't find your niche your passion your love yeah i mean i got certified in skydive and i was like jumping out of planes and shit and like <laughs> And dude, it's crazy because like I, I had many, many jumps and like, you know, the, ner the you don't really get nervous till you get to the DZ. And then once you start getting ready to get on the plane, then you walk to the plane, you get on the plane, the door opens from the plane and you bail out. And then once you're out, it's, a, it's you're like past the point of no return. So the fear ends and, and then picks up again a little bit before you pull your chute to make sure that there's no malfunction. But the fear even from jumping out of a plane, which I'm like literally dying. Like when you jump out of a plane, you're you're. Your, your destiny is death. You have to save your own life before you hit the ground. Like that's, that's, that seems hardcore, right? Like you jump out of a plane and like, if you don't save your life, if you don't do, if you just don't do anything, you're going to die a hundred percent. You have to take the actions by pulling your chute and, and doing what you have to do to save your life and then land properly. And, and so it's like, even as, as crazy and hardcore as that sounds, that still to me wasn't as, as anxiety and nerve wracking as, as the day where I wake up for a fight in preparation for the fight and get into the arena, walking out for the fight and right before the fight starts. As crazy as that Absolutely. sounds, and there was, it was, there's obviously you think less risk of death and and all that kind of stuff, but it shows you it's a different kind of fear, and and, and it still was worse for fighting than it was for jumping out of planes. For sure, but you know why? It it is ego based. Yeah, it's ego -based I think that's fear. what it is. You know what I'm saying? And you're letting I other people down. I, I, <laughs> yeah, of course. I didn't fear you. You didn't fear me. You're like, fuck this. It wasn't guy, the pain. Know? Yeah, but but I, I didn't fear you, but I feared the result. The yeah. embarrassment, right? The, the 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 losing the fight in front of everybody, but letting my people down and 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 all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like we're we're uh, uh, it was a pay per view event. It, it was you know a, a, a contender fight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was something big, but it's it's all ego based. Yeah, man. you're right. It's all ego. That's that's why we're so nervous and so we think we overthink. We have anxiety. Imagine if I didn't care about winning. I don't think I'd be. I'd, I'd, I'd be anxious no, and I don't yeah. think I'd have a successful career either. No. I don't think I would have made it to the UFC, you know, if I yeah. didn't care. And and that's why it's a gift and a curse. You know, sometimes it, it helps you and sometimes it, it, it messes you up. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's what makes winning and success so much feeling so much better because when you yeah. take more risk, then when you when you achieve what you're risking and, and, and your goal, it's so much better. That's why when you when you jump out of a plane, you land, you know, you land and you're like, ah, and you high five your friend and you go back in the DZ. When you win a UFC fight, you're jumping all over the ring. You're doing backflips. You, you, you never see that when someone lands after jumping out of a plane. You never see somebody putting their yeah. hands up and running around and like pointing at people yeah. and like, you know, it being all crazy. <laughs> because that, that shows you that it's that much greater, that, that rush from winning yeah. a fight, especially a championship fight or something. That rush is so yeah. much bigger because the risk was so much, in your mind at least, was so much more, you know, even than doing deadly shit, you know, like it's because again, you have the pressure of your team and your family and your friends. And it's, it's such a catastrophic thing that in your mind, at least it's really not, but in your mind, in your, in you know, your mind, yeah. if, 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 realistically, it's a fight. You're going to win. You're going to lose your, your mom. Your, your family's going to love you either way. But in your mind, it's like at the end of the world, you know, if you lose a fight, <laughs> worse than dying, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. It's, it's, yeah, like I said, it's, it's ego based because it, I mean sometimes you know they they call us warriors and I'm like, yo, man, we're not in Iraq, you know, we're we're in, we're in a controlled environment here. Yeah, yeah. There's a cage, there's a referee, there's rules, there's no weapons. So I mean, it's 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 yes, it's it's a tough sport, but it's like it's not it's not you know like real soldiers that go go to war. Right. They're the warriors, you know. Like we're 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 entertainers at the end of the day, I believe. Oh, I was going to ask you, do you use the best below the waist grooming products on the market? I'm not talking to you, David. I'm talking to you guys. 
Because if you don't, and you want to use the best below the waist grooming products on the market to save 20% and get free shipping, I'm going to help you. Manscaped is precision engineered tools for your family jewels. And the products are now available in Europe, Canada, and Australia. And if you go to manscaped.com, M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com, and use code QUICK, that's my nickname. It's not how you use the tools. Uh, you don't want to go quick. You get 20% off and free shipping. So support the podcast, save 20%, get free shipping, and go to manscaped.com today. And I want to get to what you're doing now. You look you look huge, man. I'm uh, looking at your Instagram. You look gigantic. What are you doing, man? <laughs> it, it, I think it's because of our fight. Some magic happened, dude, because I think we both kind of don't look our age because you don't look 41, and people tell me I don't look 41. So, like, and I look at your Instagram, and you're, like, fit. You, you got this yoked body and everything. So, like, like what are you doing, man? What, what's going on over there? Man, I'm, man, I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan stuff in, in the past few years, man. I, I've been intermittent fasting doing sauna all the time and then and, and just just doing a lot a lot of good stuff I, I i lift i lift uh when i was fighting i didn't lift much because i was scared to to bulk up you know because i put on muscle very fast so when i fought i was doing a lot of body weight stuff you know i lifted a little bit now i lift almost every day yeah. and it's uh yeah i just lift a lot eat well and and uh eat a lot better now than when I was fighting, believe yeah. it or not. <laughs> yeah. I eat a lot better now because I'm just more, it's awareness, right? Like I'm aware, I'm just more mature. I just know, I just know what's, what the consequences are of eating healthy and not eating healthy. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a matter, it's, it's wisdom as you get older, you know? So yeah, just eat, eat well and train, train every day, man. Even right now there's a lockdown in, in, uh, in Montreal, Canada. And then I just train, Every day I'm 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 home. I train and uh, and I eat clean. But yeah, that's what I'm doing these days, man. <laughs> it's it's slow here in Thailand as well, and so I'm doing the same. I'm, it's almost like we're we're, we're <laughs> it's almost like we're the same, man. Like I do the same thing, and and like it's so nice because I'm healthy now. You know, like my body's healthy. So people see pictures of me now, and they're like, man, you look different than when you were a UFC fighter. You know, like you've gotten so much bigger. But it's it's just health wise, you know. And the cool thing is for me is being so skinny for so long in my welterweight career. And I, like if you look at pictures, I look like sick, like because I was, you know, it's not like a skinny, like you're trying to cut weight. It's like mm -hmm. I was like deathly skinny even mm -hmm. during the fight, you know, like it looks so you see mm -hmm. my bones and stuff. And I got so like insecure because all the fans and the media was always like on me, like, you know, like that I'm I, I look sick and I'm skinny and I, I got this I got cancer and I got this thing and I got that thing and I should eat and all that. So it feels good to now be healthy. And then, like you said, be able to lift and work out for my health and for my looks as, and for the aesthetics of just being yeah. strong and, and look normal yeah. and look big versus like having to train seven hours a day or six hours a day or whatever and, and train yourself to where you can't get big. You know, you can't get like, yeah. you know, the, the size I always wanted to be and, and have the strength that I always wanted to have because I was just doing too much athletic athletic and cardiovascular stuff, you know? So it's the same for me, man. Just eating healthy, training every day and, and, and training the way I kind of want to train, you know, to be stronger and bigger and for people not to say I'm skinny. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Do you, man. Just just exactly what, what, do what feels right because, you, you know, to be honest, when, when I was training for fights, like when we were training for fights, it was there was so much skill to work on, so many skills. You have to work on your boxing skills, Muay Thai skills, Jiu Jitsu skills, wrestling skills. Yeah. Like, like it's skills, skills, skills. You have to train, train, train. You know, you, you can't focus that much on weight training, on lifting. The guys that did didn't last long. They didn't have a ten plus year career. You know, like like you, you got to focus on skills. That's why it's it's it, it was hard to, to to just to just put on muscle and mass and be jacked and strong you know yeah and it's different so. too people don't realize even like the stress and, and anxiety it's almost like uh, you always have the stress and anxiety when you're in the ufc or, and you have fights and you're in fight camp because like like now i don't have stress and anxiety when i work out so it's fun you know i go in there I put some music on <laughs> And I'm just working out and I'm looking in the mirror, you know, checking myself out if nobody's looking, you know, like flexing and shit. And like, you know, and I, it's just fun. You know, I'm, I'm getting stronger. I'm listening to music. I'm focusing on like business goals I have and things I'm going to do and like my life. Whereas when you're a fighter, you can't have a fun workout like because you're constantly thinking that your opponent's training too. So you have to train harder. You know, you, you, you're exhausted. You don't want to train, but you can't take that day off. You can't take that session off because you feel guilty if you sit at home or, or you miss a workout 
out. So it's like a different type of training now. It's like a more enjoyable training. When you're in the UFC yeah, and you're training, yeah. it's like a like a like a like a like a military boot camp style training where you have to train for war. You know what I mean? You're training all the time, and your yeah. your opponents are training, and you can't. For me, it was always like I can't let myself train less than him, or I lose the fight. You know, automatically, it's going to yeah. happen. So I had to yeah. always have that stress when I was training, and and it's nice to not have that anymore. Yeah, man. You know, during this fighting career, it was so tough for me to take days off. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there's a few fights that I left in the gym. I walked in the cage and I was like, "Yo, exhausted." Yeah. It was um, I, I had some some obsessive like it was some ocd stuff like sometimes it'd be like yo in my head it'd be like yo mike swig did a few more rounds he did yeah. you just did 10 rounds Same but uh, Swig apparently did, did 12 <laughs> so i would do 14 like i would play tricks in my head like that it'd be and sometimes it's not good man you gotta know when to stop you know you got you have to know your limits but sometimes i would trick myself and do more reps and do more rounds and and stay extra time in the gym and do extra days and they would mess me up, man. Ultimately Many times I, got, I even got injured. Yeah. I got some some injuries, you know, for, for, from from you know just straining my, my 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 ligaments, you know, like like the runs, the running, the 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 the, the, the lifting, the the, the the training. Sometimes when you do too much, too much of anything is not good, man. Yeah, and, and I know you're close with George St. Pierre, and I heard I heard the same thing with him. Like I heard he's very meticulous about training, and and someone that I knew trained with him up there and said that he just like like thinks everything through like i mean even like his diet and sets his clothes out the next day for training and knows everything he's going to do when he gets there and like he's very 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 meticulous about every single training session every single day is that is that true 100 percent. very meticulous very uh specific and methodical with his training and his uh his approach to every fight every fight is like uh, it doesn't matter who the opponent is it's 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 he's the best of the best in the world and we we have to find a way to beat him at every every aspect of the game, you know, like the, he's, he's he's man, I admire him so much because he's he's um he's very um the difference between George and a lot of fighters, including myself, is that George will very early had no problem working on his weaknesses, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. He was like at a very early age, a very stage, very early stage in his career. Like like when he first started, he was when he first started, he was a karate guy, good kicks, decent hands. Jiu-jitsu was so so. Wrestling was non-existent, not very good. He started boxing with boxers. He went to the wrestling club, wrestled with wrestlers, like high-level wrestlers, national champs. You know, like like trained with them hard. Started training, uh, you know, jiu-jitsu in Montreal with a few guys. You know, he tra trained trained uh, at with Christophe Bidou, his mentor. They trained, he trained with uh, Fabio Holanda, Brazilian top team in, in Montreal. And then eventually he went to, to Hansel Gracie in, uh, in New York. You know, like he, he, he went with the best grapplers. He went with the best boxers in Montreal, best wrestlers in Montreal. I mean, he always went outside of his comfort zone and trained with the best all the time, like all the time on a regular basis. And, and that's what made him. Like, like, there's not one trainer or one guy that made GSP. GSP made himself yeah. by putting himself in the uncomfortable situations day after day after day, you know? Yeah. Considering, considering you didn't know I got sick and then I obviously dropped to welterweight and then won enough fights to get back to title contention, I fought Dan Hardy uh, to fight – for GSP, so I was I was in another title contention fight to fight GSP. W were you surprised that like that that I I was trying to go for another title fight in a different weight class? Were you just like, dude, this guy really wants a title fight? He's gonna he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna go through every weight class till he can until <laughs> he can finally get a title fight. I was not surprised. I mean, that's what fighters do. Like, like, like guys, <laughs> if if you make it to the UFC, man, you want that belt, man, because when you have that belt, even if you lose it the next day, you're forever the UFC world champion. So. So it's like it's it's a uh, it's 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 something that you always chase until you're not in the UFC anymore uh, until you retire because 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 I mean it's it's you always have that dream that opportunity to, to to get that title so I was not surprised at all when I saw you dropped and I'm like yeah he's probably gonna go for the to the welterweight belt you know and 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 you know fights are fights you never know what can happen bro you never know. 
you never know. I mean, George lost to Sarah, right? To yeah. Matt Sarah. I mean, the, it's it's a right after he, we fought. I think that was the very next fight after we fought. No, 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 no. Yeah. He, no, he fought Matt Hughes. He fought Matt Hughes. And he won. He beat Matt Hughes and become the champion again. And then I think he lost to Sarah the next one. No, 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 no. After we fought. Oh no, he lost to Sarah, and then we fought. Or no, no. No, no. We fought. We fought, and, and the same night he challenged Matt Hughes in the in the cage. That's right. He said, "I'm not impressed by your performance." That's that was right. The night we fought, me and you. And then after that, he 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 fought he fought Matt Hughes. Yeah. And he won the belt. Yeah. And then I fought the night that he lost to Sarah, and that and that was that oh, was yeah? that, that was the night that I fought Yushin Okami and lost the decision to fight. Uh, that I was going to fight to Anderson. Oh, wow. And it was so okay, crazy because you talk about that loss and that pressure. Um, I wasn't happy that George St. Pierre lost. I'm a huge fan of George St. Pierre. But I'll tell you, I've said this before in the podcast, but it, obviously you're closer to the situation. Um, you know, when you lose that fight, that feeling is horrible. Now, I just had, I just, I just had a title contention win to beat or fight for the title. So I had a, t- I had a title shot, risked yeah. that title shot in my hometown against Yushin Okami and lost it. So now, now I'm now it's like the worst loss you could possibly imagine. Like you just took a risk yeah. and then and then lost everything. Like you lost something that you had. You lost your title. Like you had you got a title yeah. shot. You, you fought for a title. I I never have. So like I lost mm-hmm. that opportunity. So I was like walking back to the hotel and I was so depressed. It was my hometown. Everybody I knew was there. And so I'm thinking like everybody's thinking about me and like I, I let everyone down and like it was the most traumatic experience for me, like walking back to the hotel. And then the place went crazy. Like the place went crazy. I couldn't believe they were just in shock. Everyone's crazy. And they said George yeah. St. Pierre just got knocked out by Matt Sarah. And and now that Matt Sarah was such a huge underdog in that fight. And I and like I said, I've always rooted for uh, for uh, George St. Pierre and always been a big fan of his. But in that moment, in that moment that he lost that fight. Oh my God, the pressure got lifted off my shoulders like you wouldn't believe. Because I knew everybody was focused on George St. Pierre yeah. and not focused yeah. on me anymore. And if the greatest yeah. in the world just got knocked out, you know, one of the greatest fighters in the world just got knocked out by an underdog, at least it showed the world, hey, shit happens, you know, and it made me feel yeah. better about losing. Like, hey, you know, anything can happen. So it, I, yeah. I know it's crazy to say, but that, that moment made it a little bit better for me to like be able to sleep maybe three days later i don't know when i slept but yeah <laughs> but it's crazy and, and that was a crazy fight i mean it was, it was so unexpected you know in those flurries and oh it's crazy man yeah one punch could change everything man everything. This, is, this, this will happen you know george got caught with that one punch and lost balance and then 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 sarah took it from there but it's 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 a fight game man we've man you, you saw what happened like so many things happened uh when Anderson silva got got clipped by by chris weidman and, and yeah. there's so many examples that we, that we have it's a fight game. Those four ounce gloves, man. You, you never know what can happen in the, with these four ounce gloves. You know, it's a, it's 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 a fight. It's a fight, and especially at that level, at that level, man. Anybody could beat anybody. You yeah. you could go right now, get to a training camp, and fight the welterweight champ. I don't know who the and you never know what can happen, right? Yeah. You, you could fight the middleweight champ. You never know what can happen. It's a punch. It's a yeah. punch. You know. So that's and that's what people need to understand. You never know. You never know. I have my chances against you. You have your chances against me. I have my chance against any champion. Yeah. You never know. What if what if that night he's 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 off and I'm on and I land that punch? Yeah. He maybe maybe uh, maybe uh, you know uh, nine times out of ten he beats me, but that one time I got it. Yeah, and that's you know, why and that's why we're right. so damn nervous before a fight because we we could have done we could have trained better we could have been more prepared we could have been in better shape and we could have been the better fighter and we could have still lost and that's the scariest thing yep. in boxing it's yep. like when you walk out and you really feel like you're the better trained fighter and the better boxer like I think you know pretty well you're gonna win the fight I mean most of the time the better boxer wins most, it's, it's not so yeah. much that you see an upset in boxing um, but in yeah. MMA with all the different variation or variables and, and variations of moves and techniques. It's a hell of yeah. a lot easier to lose in, in, in MMA. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. one yeah. strike, one cut, one whatever. That's that's right. That's why I respect so much these fighters that have like, you know, like like your boy Habib and all these guys. Yeah. You know, George and and, and they have long winning streaks in MMA. It's not easy to have a a, a, a ten five winning streak. Like Kamaru Usman, yeah. a stud, world, world champion, a uh, welterweight. It's not easy to have a. I don't know how many fights in a row. It's it's it's, it's, crazy. it's tough, man. Yeah. It's tough. 
<laughs> yeah. Because the thing is, is like you never, people don't understand. They always expect you to go in 100%, you know? And they don't understand that you're normal people like everyone else. So everyone else has problems in their life. And we do too, you know? Sometimes we have injuries. Sometimes we have problems with our, our maybe our wife or, or we're going through a divorce or we just lost a loved one or all these things I've had <laughs> in my career. Um, you know, you, or, or, or you've had depression about something or, you know, maybe any, could, any little thing could happen and you have to take that and go out there and still fight. And if you lose, you just, you got to shut up and not say anything. Cause if you say something, it's an excuse. So it's like, when you yeah. see these guys, like yeah. you said, that have these 10 fight, 11 fight, 12 fight win streaks, like Anderson's and, and some of these guys, it's a lot of respect to those guys, like the Habibs, because Oof. they've, they've had to have went out there with problems and injuries with and, problems. and, and detrimental yeah. stress, like Habib in his last fight with Gaethje. They, um, I mean, it was unbelievable. He trained five days for that fight. He had mumps. He had a broken toe. Um, all of his, all of his training partners got uh, Corona and, and he couldn't, he couldn't train with them or, or they couldn't train or whatever. Like he, he literally trained hard, I think like five days for that fight and then went out there and wow. then, and had one of the fights of his life and, and beat yeah. one of the most violent guys in, the, in his division on the feet and, and was, was winning on the feet and the ground. And it's like, you look yeah. at guys like that and you're just like, wow, man, that's, that's crazy. You know, like it, you, yeah. and through all your wins, the problems we didn't know about that you've probably taken in there and still won. And, and it makes people don't realize that, but these guys on these streaks, man, it's, mm -hmm. it's tough mm -hmm. to do. It's super tough to do. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. But you know, also uh, one thing about us in, in our era, it was, um, we're figuring things out. You know, right. a lot of, a lot of people have to understand that we're figuring things out. Now the guys have the, they have the blueprint. We yep. have them, the guys of today, they have the blueprint. They know what to do. But back then, man, a lot of times, it, you, the one kickboxing coach will be like, yeah, you should do a lot more kickboxing. The, 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 the jiu-jitsu guy, more jiu-jitsu, this, that, you know what I'm saying? So the, it, it, it was, we had, us, the fighters, had to, to make the formula, make the final formula that worked for us. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it, was, it, was, it was not easy, man, no. to find the right thing, the right formula. That's a great. That's a to great point. On. If you watch the show Kingdom on, uh, uh, there's a TV show called Kingdom, and it's 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 just a raw look at MMA, and it's but it's like accurate. Like it's uh, that's our era. Our era was like you know three people staying in a hotel room and the bathtub floods while you're sleeping, and you you know you, the, the the coaches are arguing and backstage before you walk out of who's going to be the the main corner and who's going to do this and changing your game plan. Like, like you're right. Like it was we didn't. There were so many problems in our era because it wasn't like a cookie cutter form like they have now and yeah. of course there's, yeah. there's variations now and people are different but we were i mean yeah. it was like some crazy stories from our time like i look back at the stories of some of the other fighters and things that happened at hotels and outside the hotels and f during fight week and it's like holy shit it was crazy man it was like the wild west compared to now yeah yeah now it's structured man now <laughs> we know what works what doesn't work and there are no secrets but back then it was like ah these guys do a lot of this. Now we know everything, everything. about everybody. Yeah. Like we, there's, there's no more secrets. Everybody does seminars. Everything's on YouTube. This, that. It's, it's so easy to get footage on, on any fighter to study. Back then, I remember my first few fights before the UFC, man. It was, it was the VHS days, you know? Like I was, <laughs> we are trying to find VHS tapes of our opponents, man. It was the hardest thing in the world to find tapes on guys, you know? It was crazy. Now, pfft, and then even before that, I, st I started, I turned pro in 98 and I had 21 MMA fights amateur before I turned pro. So by, by the time I turned pro in 1998, which was got, I mean, 20, 23 years ago, uh, that's when I turned pro. And, and even at that point, when I turned pro, like sometimes I didn't even see my opponent till the way in. I had no idea. Like my weight class changed sometimes to, to the higher weight class because my opponent was too big. <laughs> And I remember Bob Cook one time telling me, like, I had cut weight to go to Florida to fight this guy, Butch Bacon. And uh, I, I was going there, and I'd cut weight for the first time, trying to cut, like, a lot of weight. Cause I was kind of big, you know, for this middleweight fight. And, and Bob said, we got some updates. And he always had updates, and they were always bad. It was always like, your fight is going to be the first fight of the night or something. Or, you, you know, you're going to fight the opponent change. You're going to fight this guy. Or, or your opponent's a lady might not show up, whatever the case. And he goes, we got some updates. And he's reading off the updates. He goes, Swick, your fight's at 205. And then he just, he just read it. He, this is how Bob Cook is, but he read it so casually, you know. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, what do you mean my fight's at 205? Neither one of us weighed 205. Like, what, why would they say that? And he's like, well, one of you is. And he goes, anyway, so just – start eating and then he goes <laughs> and then he goes down the list this is total bob cook this is why this is our era you know like it was he, he was he thought it was funny he's my coach but he thought it was funny kind of that that i'm fighting this guy now who, who's like 
weighing in almost 205 and I'm, and I've been cutting to make 185 and that's like the old days, man. That's the crazy old days that we had to go through to get to the UFC and to get, to get our chance and to, you know, to get in there. It's, it's crazy, man. It's so, so true what you're saying. Yeah. But, but you know what, man, once I got to UFC, you probably felt the same. It's like, once you get to UFC, man, it was so structured. Yeah. Like the way they ran the shows and like Burt Watson, what, oh, you yeah. and all that stuff, you know, having Burt taking care of you and man, Man, that stuff changed everything for me. I'm like, I really felt like a professional athlete yeah. when, when I reached the UFC. You know, it was really like, wow, it was it, it was fantastic. I had some great, I had some great fights in um in Montreal for for TKO and uh, UCC. It was it was it was it was structured. It was good, but the way the UFC put it together, I was like, wow, it was it was it was amazing. It was amazing. The crazy thing was the one of, one of the the crazy things that's a small thing, but like it's had such an impact is when the UFC first flew me to to I think Vegas or somewhere. They flew me to talk to him or an event or whatever the case for a fight. I don't remember what it was, but the first time the UFC ever flew me somewhere, I was going with another fighter that was my teammate, right? And okay. when we got to Vegas, I was so surprised. We had separate hotel rooms. Because we flew together and we were on the same team and we we're friends, you know what I mean? So like, I was yeah. uh, from the other promotions stacking us in like two and three in a room and like all this kind of yeah. stuff. Like I was so surprised that UFC. Ha I was like, I got my own hotel room. Like, this is mine. Like I, I got my own room. Like I remember being so surprised, but I was so excited about that, dude. Now, now guys are getting yeah. like their own rooms. The corners getting rooms. Some fighters are getting suites and like you know they're yeah. going to Dubai and like private jets and it's just like it's it's <laughs> crazy, man. Like how it changed. Yeah, completely changed for sure, man, for sure. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a uh, evolution of the sport, of the business. There's more money involved, more and more, more people involved. It's uh, I mean, I mean, just the UFC stuff. I remember after my first UFC fight, Dana White came and congratulated me. And we talked after the fight, and, and, and like he gave me his cell number. Yeah, <laughs> try to reach Dana White now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm it's a little it's, different. It's not the same, man. It's 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 not the same now. It's like the the company's twenty times bigger, but it's it's, but 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 you know, I'm grateful and happy that we um were a part of the growth of the sport of what it is today. You yeah. know, a lot of guys are are getting paid and making making big bucks. You know, and and we're we have a part in this. You know, like we we paved the way for that. Like we we put on some great fights, some great entertainment for the fans and, and, and for the sport. So, so it's, it's whenever I see guys making millions and millions of dollars, like, 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 you know, Habib and Connor and all these guys, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for them, but it's like guys like us did the right thing. You know, we, we, we always fought hard, exciting fights. You know, we, 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 we always had a, you know, good reputation outside the cage. You know, we did good things outside the cage. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great, man. It's cool. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. Mike Swick, he's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. I'm telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on. Let me ask you just because going on that real fast with all things considered, because we got a lot of publicity when we fought uh, because there wasn't yeah. so many fighters. So when we fought, we became bigger stars faster because there wasn't so many fighters and we moved up kind of fast. You know, now there's guys three, four, five and oh in the UFC and you still don't know who they are because they, they yeah. haven't had a big fight. Um, so because of that and because of, uh, you know, the, the level of competition, I think was was a little bit easier in our era compared to like a lot of these Goliath world champion wrestlers and, and, and Olympic gold medalist and, and all these people getting in the sport now because of the money and the, the, the fame and stuff. Do, would you have rather fought in our division? Are you happy that you fought in our, in our era and, and that we had the career we had 
and, and, and did it at that time? Or would you have rather traded that and fought now in this, in this era and tried to work your way up and, and be a star and get a championship belt? Let me tell you something, man. You know, you, 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 it's a good question. But you remember that spinning back kick I did on Charles McCarthy? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I so do. spinning back kick, UFC 50, 50, I think it was 52 or something like that. Crowd goes berserk. And that was after Tough. So it was at Atlantic City. Trump plus a hotel. Ah, everybody's going crazy. Oh, my God. So after the fight, you know, I'm uh, in the crowd. I meet one of my idols, Roy Jones Jr. Everybody's like, oh, man, good fight, man. Uh, everybody's like, I'm like, oh, my God. And I get, a lot of people know me now. It's, it's, it's crazy. So after the fact of the press conference, I get, I get an envelope for, 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 for my knockout. $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> so so i'm saying back then i was happy it's super ha now it's ninety thousand dollars for knockout the night but back then i got a g i got a thousand dollars you know what I'm so it's like man it's, yeah there's a lot of variables <laughs> to think about <laughs> if i if i would have done that stuff 10 years later it would have been much much better you know but hey it is what it is the, th the thing is like I, i'm 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 happy i did it at that time you know because if i would have fought if i'd be fighting now and doing all that stuff now is different. The athletes are different. There's more. There's more on the table. There's more training. There's more. More training avail available. There's 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 a uh, there's a lot more stuff that's available to the fighters. Back then, we, man, we were scratching our heads trying to figure out how to cut five ten pounds. You know, we didn't we didn't know the best ways, the healthy way to cut weight. Now guys cut weight a lot healthier than than us. Little things like that. So competition would be harder is harder today for sure but w what we knew back then it was just as hard if you compare you know yeah true i met my first couple fights in ufc were like a 20 second knockout a 22 second knockout and then two first round submissions right it was just <laughs> normal fights but i won very fast and devastating whatever and then i had the fight with you and i think at the fight that i had with you or around that time dana's like man we got to do something to make this more exciting all right guys we're going to start giving bonuses, 25000 for for knockout of the night and 25000 for submission of the night. And I was just like, yeah. huh? <laughs> I was like, my yeah. first four fights, I could have won all those, all that money. There was $100,000 on the line. I was like, you, you now decide that, that you're going to do 25000 knockout of the night and, and submission of the night? I was like, son of a bitch. I can't believe of all this timing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. So hurt. Exactly, man. But hey, man, it, it is what it is, man. We did what we did and it's, and it's, it's 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 fantastic man now just look at us now things are good man yeah. things are okay you know what i'm saying it's like it's it's a we can sit back and enjoy you know you know till till maybe last year i would get emails and dms from random promoters asking me yeah would you like to take this fight and man it was retiring for me was the hardest thing to do man it took me i haven't fought in in, in five six years it took me at least four years to re to make peace with my retirement, yeah. to make to accept the fact that I'm not going to fight again, and I'm not I'm not going to compete in front of uh, in front of people and, and and have my hand raised and you know what I'm saying like like that rush that we were talking about earlier, it's 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 not easy, especially yeah. when you when it's it's everything to you, you know what I'm saying. For the longest time, fighting and competing, my adult life was all about fighting. It was. The, you know, I, I turned pro at 20 years old. So my adult life, you know, and, and I fought till I was 35. So my adult life was my only source of income was fighting, was competing, F competing or sponsors. That's it. That's all I did. And, and, and to turn to the next chapter, it was one of the toughest things for me to do, man. To, 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 to look in the mirror and, and, and you're, not, you're not a pro fighter anymore. It's... it's like I was at some point, I was like, "Who am I if I'm not a fighter?" You know, I had to dig deep and try to. F that's 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 when I started teaching. That's why I started, you know, do different things. You know, experiment and 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 here I am today. I'm grateful. I'm happy. But man, it was a tough. It was a tough period. Like three, four years. I was I was unsure of what was next. You know. What about you, man? But it's pretty damn cool nowadays. As big as the UFC is, to be like, yeah, I did that. I was a number one contender. <laughs> I did that shit. 
You know what I mean? Exactly. That's pretty fucking cool to say. And and and, and for yeah. me, like you just asked for me, you know, the crazy thing is four years after my last fight and now I fought my last fight still like past retirement. I retired like two or three times. I don't know. But like I, I fought my last fight still uh, late and, and like post retirement. Technically, I did it to promote the gym, but because I missed it so much, it, I really wanted to fight again. And four years after that fight, it was still in my head so much and my business was going good and like I was so I was I was doing so good outside of fighting that I didn't have to fight and I didn't you know there was no reason but I just it was in my mind so much to just take one more and fight once more, one more time whatever I went to get LASIK surgery and I had two choices to get LASIK surgery and one choice was that they were going to do something that I can actually still fight like it wasn't uh it wasn't, I forgot there's two choices. I forgot what the other one was, but it was a way that they do it and they don't detach the retina or something. And like, it's a longer heal time, but you can still possibly fight because it heals your eye. And then the other way, you can't fight. Like they, they cut your retina on both sides or whatever. And they said, if you do this, you can never get hit in the eye or, or fight because it'll yeah. detach your retina and you won't pass your medical exams and you can't. I chose that way because I wanted to not be able to fight again. And then I could get out of my wow. head that I can't fight again. And then and then the wow. second I got the surgery and I knew that I couldn't pass the eye exam to be able to fight again, it was out of my head. And then I, I knew I couldn't do it anyway. And that's kind of how I got over not, not thinking about it so much because I didn't want to keep tormenting my brain about possibly going back and fighting again. Uh, so, it's cra so I know exactly what you feel like, man. I had to make myself not be able to fight again almost due to injury wow, <laughs> yeah. wow. crazy right bro I, I i commend you for that man. <laughs> much respect wow that yeah is crazy he's like are you sure because yes. you're a fighter you're not gonna ever fight again i'm like you know what i'm not sure but just do it and then i'll be sure after that <laughs> i was like i'll have no <laughs> i'll have no choice so just do it man wow. and hurry up hurry up before i change you, my you, mind you never got tempted to fight in thailand I did fight in Thailand for years before, like just little small, little Muay Thai scrimmage matches and, and stuff like that. Okay, but you did, you did some matches. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's like cool. when I was younger. Because I was, I was fighting. I've been training in Thailand since I was like 19. So like I was always coming back and forth to Thailand. And, and, oh. and I, I started my camps in Thailand and I would train for a month or two, then go back and then I'd do. Because, you know, they didn't, they didn't train MMA. They didn't teach you MMA stances and all that. So I'd have yeah, to learn all yeah. the elbows and techniques and kicks and all that stuff. And then I would have to come back and then get my – get all the, the stuff that I can't use out of my head and, and move into yeah, MMA, yeah. grapple, you know, do the things I need for MMA. So I've, I've been training in Thailand for 20 years, basically, over 20 years. And so wow. that's why I wanted to so build this gym. familiar with the gym. culture and all that stuff, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I built, I built my company, my business here. I live here full time in Phuket on an island in southern Thailand. So, right. I, I, yeah, so it's, 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 uh, it's a good life for post-fight for me, man. But, but, but for you, I got into fighting because I watched the movie The Karate Kid, and I heard – that you, it was the same. Is that true? You no, weren't. It was blood sport. It was blood sport. Oh, it was similar yeah. then. So you were inspired by yeah. a movie, and that's what you got. Is that what initially got you as a kid to, to decide to do martial arts? I want to do martial arts, to be honest, because I want to. I want to make movies. I want. I want to be. I want to learn how to do the splits. Yeah. <laughs> like like Van Damme <laughs> and George Saint Pierre, and just, and, and, and just do 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 what he did like on, on the screen i wanted to be i wanted to be uh an actor you know and and, and then i stood during during my uh trainings when i was younger i was doing so good in sparring they sent me to a competition you know and then at the competition i just lost and 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 i was devastated and then then i became obsessed with competing uh, we talk about like nine ten years old and then from there i just never looked back and just Wanted to fight and fight and fight and compete and compete, you know. But but uh, at first, when I first started, I wanted to make movies, man. I didn't want to fight nobody. <laughs> I wanted, I, I, and that was the same. I wanted to end my career with movies. I wanted to like get get <laughs> trained enough to the, and make a name or something to where I could like be like Chuck Norris or something, where I could like do action films and stuff because I made some kind of name for myself in fighting. But I never. I started getting into business, and I just got over over passionate and crazy about that. And so I just yeah. it took over whatever. So what? How, how did it go for you after fighting? And and what are you doing now? Like like what are you what are you doing? Are you still training people? And are you doing some more movies coming up or anything? Or I, I, I have a I have a gym. I have a it's called the Crow Training Center. Yep, you had that. Know, remember. Um, in Montreal, you know, it, it's been going on for five years, but you know, COVID hit hit us yeah. la last year, so we we shut down for a few months. And now that we reopened this last summer and then shut down again in November because of because of COVID. So so it's kind of slow. Um, so I've been I've been I've been writing for a long time. You know, I've been writing scripts and, and, oh, and, nice. and 
uh, stories and stuff like that. And then uh, I wrote a uh, two short films. I did. I produced two short films for uh, a potential Creed three. You know, and um, and uh, yeah, it, it's making a lot of noise, man. I released them uh, in the past few months, and one of them has 1.1 million views wow. on YouTube. The other one has 800,000, and uh, it's getting good reviews and stuff. So, so, so I'm, I'm having fun with that. You know, it's a uh, a good friend of mine, his name is uh, Patrick Barbo, and he's uh, he he directed a few uh, independent films as well. And then I told him about my idea, and, and he's like, hey, let's, let's make a short film, man. I'm like, really? You think it's a good idea? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The story is amazing. So so we we did that, and, and we experimented, man. I didn't know it was going to. It was gonna, it was gonna be that popular, but man, it's getting millions of views, and it's, it's, it's fantastic, man. It's, it's, it's great. Congrats, man. That's awesome. Uh, thank you, thank you, man. I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen with it, but it's, it's. I'm just grateful that it's, uh, you know, because uh, I practice a lot. Like I have an acting coach and all that stuff, so I practice, yeah. I practice, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad it's, it's, it's paying off, you know. That's awesome, man. I'm gonna stay up and follow you. I'm, mean, I'm already following you, but I'm gonna stay up to all your, uh, your updates and stuff. It'd be awesome to see you. Uh, do some films and and go to the theater yeah. and see you and thank you and thank you man yeah I'll, I'll send you the links to my films man I'll yeah. send you uh, I'll send you the stuff man I got to ask you a couple more things real fast though but what, what do you think about the yeah. state of the, the middleweight division now like considering how it was when we were coming up what do you think about the middleweight division now and Izzy and 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 the top contenders Whitaker and Costa and it's what a stacked division <laughs> it's, it's man big, what a man. stacked division it's it's crazy uh, um um. Izzy is a is is a beast. Is is he's, he's just not the perfect fighter, but he's very close, yeah. very close to being perfect. Yeah. You know, um, um, he rarely makes mistakes. He does get hit at times. He does get clipped, which is sometimes worries me because of his style. You know, sometimes he does get clipped, but I mean, it's 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 a it's a fight game. You're gonna get hit, but um, but but that's the type of style that he the the style he has is a style that. Is good when you're young and fresh, but when you age, that style plays against you. That's the Roy yeah. Jones style. That's the Anderson yeah. Silva style. You know what I'm saying? When you when you get older and your reflexes slow down, yep. this is when this is, it's no good. Absolutely. it's no good. You agree with me, right? Hundred yeah. percent. Like yeah, the so guys that's done better, like in the older age, are your brawn, strong, like like uh, kind of just hard, powerful guys that can still hit hard even if it's slow and throw people around like your 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 Dan Hendersons, your Randy Couture's, your your yeah. your wrestling based fighters that can at least take you down and, and 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 do stuff like that. It tends to be in later in your career. Those are those are the ones that's been more successful or the kind of the more the more dominant, stronger, bigger uh, and oftentimes wrestling based guys than more your strikers that get slower and then once you once yeah. you lose that speed and and that accuracy and 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 you know and we saw in Izzy's, you know, game against Jan. I know Jan's a big guy, but we saw some 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 openings there when he got taken down. Yeah. He didn't move. I mean, of course, you, I've grappled with big guys. You've grappled with big guys. When you see a good jiu-jitsu guy or a good guy on the ground, he doesn't just lay there. You know what I mean? So, like, even with yeah. Jan being bigger, uh, Izzy didn't do the things that, that he's going to have to do eventually to be able to beat guys, If even if guys like Costa get on top of him or Whitaker or someone like that, you know, and they do get him down. He has great takedown defense, but he will get taken down again eventually. So I think it did yeah. show a couple of his holes, but I am a huge fan of his striking and think he is a fantastic striker yeah. for sure. Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's amazing, man. It's just, it's just I would like him to make sure that he covers all the bases, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Because uh, a, little, a little bit of his stuff got exposed, and, uh, and and I hope he stays at middleweight, doesn't go up to, to, to yeah. fight John and all that stuff. I, I think I think middleweight division is stacked. Stay there, and there's a big gap between 185 and 205 yeah. pounds. There's big. 20 pounds. It's, <laughs> it's a very a big gap. Some people might not not get it. Oh, go up and weight, move up and weight, dude. 170 to 185, that's 15 pounds. 85 to 205, that's 20 pounds. That little five pounds. It's big. Trust me, it's a huge difference. Yeah, huge. You know, so yeah, the middleweight division is stacked. So stay there and 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 keep doing your thing. What do you think about Costa and Whitaker fighting? Do you, how how do you think that's going to go coming up? Costa and Whitaker. That's a good fight. I didn't know they were fighting. Um, um I think they're fighting to find out who's going to fight Izzy. Yeah, th this is this is a pick and fight. They, they, at that level, man, it's a pick and fight. It's it's a we, we I, I don't. I don't know who's gonna win. Um, 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 I know I know Whitaker personally. Like he's a great guy, so I'm rooting for him. You know, 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know who's going to win. No. And since this happened recently, it's kind of a weird situation. I want to get your take on this. You're an old school guy, and, and this is kind of a weird new thing. Um, what did you think about the Sterling Yan fight where, where Sterling got the championship belt from a disqualification? Like, do you think that went down the way it should have went down, or do you think it, sh- it, was, it should have went down maybe where it was like, uh, you know, Yan didn't get the win, um, Sterling didn't get the win, but the championship belt also didn't get lost? Like, how, where's your take on that? Um, I, I think, you should, like, at that point, it should have went to the scorecard yeah. or something like that, you know? I think in the fourth round they can't do that or something, but I think you're right. I mean, I think that's the fair way. Yeah, I think the fair way would have been to the scorecard, but not just directly giving the belt because yeah. one is one is uh, disqualified. I, I mean, it, it is, it's is the rules. The rules are the rules, right? It, it's it's uh, If you're disqualified, you, the other guy gets the belt. I understand, but they should change that. I think they should change that. They should go to the scorecards or just make it a, like, 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 you know, like a no contest, make it a no contest, you know, or, or I don't know, but, but the belt, giving the belt to the other guy from that, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. It's, it's, I don't know how I would feel yeah. with the belt around my waist. You know, the guy knee me in the face, I'm on the floor laying down and they give me the belt and I walk around the champion of the world. I'm like, damn, yeah. you know, it, can't it, feel good about it. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's bittersweet, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Have you have you ever? Because I mean, obviously your your Muay Thai is great and your elbows and everything. Have you ever been to Thailand? I mean, have you ever came over here or no? No, bro. Do you plan no, to? Bro. Do you when, ever want to come? When I come to Thailand, I can go to AKA Thailand to see my man Mike Swick. That's it. You got an open invitation, man. I'm you, you know I, I'm seeing it loud right now. I'm not going. No, I'm going to AKA. That's where I'm going when I go to Thailand. Forget it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. You have open invitation. It'd be so awesome to train with you. And then, uh, and then there's so much to do here. I mean, I'll take you to the islands. I'll take you to all the cool places. And so hopefully you get a chance uh, in between yeah, your, you, your movie career after you finish one of these blockbuster films or, or, or do something <laughs> else. You get a nice break and you get to come to Thailand, man. Just hit me up. I want to see that, that film. I saw on your Instagram it, talking about the Creed uh, and I saw the yeah. pictures and stuff. Uh, send me the link to that film. I want to watch it, the, the short film and stuff. Yeah. So send me all that. Okay, cool. We'll do, bro. We'll do, man. And and let's let's stay in touch, man. I re- I really want to see you again, man. I want you to come to Thailand and, and see the gym and, and see what I got going on over here and and uh, show you a good time. Absolutely, bro. Man, thank you for having me on your on your podcast, man. It was it was great, man. You're the man, bro. Thank I you wish so you much. All the best, you and uh, your your family, man. All the best, bro. Thank you, you too, brother. And much respect. Right. And it's been an honor to 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 have a career at the same time you had, and an honor to fight you and and be a part of my history and a part of my career and. Uh, and it's, it's great to catch up again. So so thanks so much for coming on the show. Oh, man. Thank you, my man. Thank you. All right. Take care, brother. All right. You too, my man. Peace.